If you need a scientific paper to back up every single opinion and thought that you have or word that you utter in a conversation with somebody else and you cannot think for yourself, that's the point I was trying to make. And that the attitudes of the participants were vastly different and that that does show the intention of what those participants came to that debate to do. Recognize that science is just as corrupted as anything else, just as corrupted as politics, just as corrupted as our food system, just as corrupted as any other institution that you can name today. If you say that, well, the paper said this and so that's the God's truth, you cannot think for yourself. You're completely and utterly blocked from truth. So I'm sorry, but get a life. To those who are living their entire life on the internet. Pay attention, okay? I'm here at the park pushing my kid in the swing and I had something on my mind that I thought we should talk about because I feel like in this world there's so many examples of blurred lines between what is good, productive, healthy, and what is unproductive and unhealthy and destructive, both for our own personal development, our own lifestyles, and also how that bleeds into other people's lives and how that affects other people. And a really good example of this, this was probably more than a month ago now, I'll have to go back and look at the published date, but there was a video published and it was a debate between Dr. Anthony Chafee and Dr. Nagra, and this was moderated by Lauren Knight Hughes. And you know, if you haven't seen that debate, just go watch it. It was, it is what it is, essentially. Um, but I watched it on Dr. Nagra's platform, and then I also watched it on Lauren's platform. And I felt compelled to leave a comment. And I don't leave a lot of comments unless I really know their motive. And I really feel like there was something compelling about a particular video that I wanted to leave a comment about. And I try to do this for a couple of reasons. Number one, because I don't want to spend my entire life in the comment section. I don't think that that is healthy to do. I don't think that it's something that I want to invest my energy in all the time. On the other side of that, I think it's important to support people and leave positive comments or leave genuine questions or leave genuine points of conflict. Like if you disagree with something and you want more information or you want to have a discussion about something, I think it's perfectly appropriate and great to leave like a comment on someone's video that disagrees, that opens the door for conversation. And so I actually took quite a bit of time writing out what I thought was a very thoughtful and non-triggering comment, at least to me, because my goal leaving a comment on that video was to express my disappointment for how it went in its entirety. It was not to say one person's bad and the other is great and did perfect or vice versa or, you know, this was all bad or all good. It was just hey, I wish this would have gone differently because it's so rare to get two people who have differing opinions like that in one video where they're actually willing to talk to each other. And so it was very disappointing to me to see how that video went. And so I wanted to leave a comment expressing that. But I took a lot of time and I was very careful about how I said it because I wanted it to really represent my true feelings and not just feel like I was coming, flying off the handle and being upset about one thing or another. And I left that comment on Dr. Nagra's video and I left the same exact comment on Lauren's video. And it's fascinating to me, the difference in responses that I got. And partly I did it for this experiment because I wanted to see what kind of responses I would get from Dr. Nagra's followers and what kind of responses I would get from Lauren's followers who obviously are going to be more leaning towards animal based and the opinions that I tend to hold. And so I wanted to see what the difference would be. And YouTube doesn't always notify me when 
I get responses. And so sometimes, and I don't go back and check because again, I'm not sitting here trying to debate anybody. I'm not trying to spend my whole life, you know, back and forthing with people I really don't actually know at the end of the day in the comments section, warring back and forth over a topic that essentially nobody can win this argument in a comment section. I expected there to be a difference, obviously, in the opinions that people held based on whose channel it was being published on. But what I noticed, and what I noticed in a lot of comment sections today, is that the things that stand out, the people that stand out in those comment sections are, it's like they are living for the sole purpose of arguing with people on the internet. And I find that incredibly fascinating. You can tell by the attitude of the comments. You can tell by the demeanor of the way the person writes, the language that they use. And the most interesting part of this thing to me is that I just left my comment and I did not respond to anyone else's reply, good or bad, to my comment. And I kind of forgot about it. And a month over a month went by. And then I just happened to get this notification the other day that someone had replied in that comment thread underneath my original comment. So I went back to read it. And I saw this one name showing back up. This person was being super argumentative and very, you know, just rude, quite frankly, in their demeanor in the comment section. And I understand people are opinionated and they don't understand the other side's point of view. And so people want to argue, whatever, you know, go for it. But it had been a month since I had been in this thread. The person who shall remain nameless had responded to my comment to the original comment about a month ago and so it had been literally four weeks since he had left that reply and I replied back this morning it's been a month how long do you think it took that person to respond back to me I waited a month before I even like went back to look at anything how long do you think it took this person? I didn't time it, but it was less than two minutes. It was less than two minutes for me to get like a series of replies back, just firing back angrily. I didn't even read them. I just saw like the first few words come up in my notification and I just swipe away. Because do you understand what I'm getting at? What is this person doing with their life? What are you doing? Are you literally sitting there on your phone 100% of the time constantly just waiting to get into an argument with someone? Is that literally what you're doing with your life? At the end of the day, we all know we can't win in these comment threads. Like, there's no way to win. And even if you could win, does it even matter? Does it even matter that you won a comment thread argument on YouTube, that you changed someone's mind, that you were right. The whole point of my comment, one of the one of the main points of my comment on that video was about the attitude that was displayed in that debate. It was about it wasn't about the facts, it wasn't about the studies presented, it wasn't about the competence of the person or how well they had memorized everything they'd been indoctrinated to believe. How well they were appealing to authority the entire time how well they were trying to just confuse everyone so that they could look better, that they could look more competent. By the way, that doesn't mean that you are. Just because you can recite a bunch of memorized things doesn't mean that you're smart. It doesn't mean that you're competent. It just means that you can memorize things. I can memorize things too. That doesn't mean that I am knowledgeable from a common sense or a real world perspective on a topic. That's the difference between book learning and, and street learning right? Learning through life, learning through living, learning through experiment on yourself, learning through having to fail and make mistakes and then pick yourself back up and try again and learn the hard way versus just learning from a book and then going out into the world and claiming to be an expert. But I digress. This is why I don't do it on the internet. It's because there's no point. There's no point if someone doesn't understand that. And there's no way that you can force someone to understand that. There's no way that you can convince them of that. And that's what happened in this comment thread. This person fired, this person was like waiting a month to hear back from me. That's what it feels like. 
and within two minutes they got a notification on their phone and they were ready to fire 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 all this stuff back like get a life dude get a life and I mean that in the kindest way possible. Like, go experience life. <laughs> go to the park. Go run around. Go enjoy yourself. Get off your phone. Go experience something new today. Go have a new experience. Go talk to someone that you wouldn't normally talk to. And don't go into that conversation just trying to be right, just trying to prove yourself right, just trying to get views, just trying to, you know what I mean? We do that, we try to just get views, even in our own day-to-day -day interactions, sometimes. And it's because we're insecure. It's because you're insecure person who can't get off their phone and just go live for a minute. Get off YouTube, stop arguing with people you don't even know, that you know that you can't convince, especially with putting out negativity and putting out anger and bitterness and swearing at people and calling people names and insinuating that people are idiots and they're, you know, they're just stupid and they're incompetent. No, that's not how you convince anyone of anything. That's not how you win an argument. So I'm sorry, but get a life. Go enjoy life. There is a life and there's a world and there are experiences to be had outside of the internet and, and arguing with people that you'll never meet that you don't even know. All it does is lower your own vibration. It just lowers your own intelligence by doing that. Why? Because as much as we like to think these conversations are real, and on the one hand, yes, I believe that everybody here on the opposite side of this, that who might be commenting or listen to this, you're a real person. But this interaction in the comment threads, that's not how we are meant to interact as human beings. We are meant to look each other in the eyes. We're meant to read each other's body language. We're meant to hear the inflection in each other's voices. We're meant to have a pause that's meaningful before we continue on saying something. Like there is all these other things to consider when it comes to communication and language that you just don't get in the comment section of any video. No matter what, how well-intentioned you are, no matter your, you know, what you are trying to accomplish it's just not that's just not how we're built it's just not and that's the point of that and i think that was the fundamental disagreement in the debate it was like the the two participants could not agree or did not agree on whether what we are biologically adapted and designed to eat matters that was the first question and dr negra said he doesn't believe that that is the most important thing that we should be thinking about like I believe his almost his exact words were that just because we are adapted to a certain food doesn't mean that it's the best food for us or that it's the food that our bodies can best break down or absorb nutrition from. And obviously, if you're on my channel and you follow Dr. Shafi, you know his opinion. It's the complete opposite. Like, it would make common sense to think that what we have been eating for two million years, which we know through stable isotope testing to be what exactly we did eat. That is what our bodies are designed and adapted towards the most. Not to say we never ate any plants or never ate any nuts or never ate any berries. But what did we majorically, in the majority, what did we eat? Okay, doesn't it just make common sense to think that that's probably what our bodies work with best? Okay, I don't see anything wrong with that argument, but they could not get past and they could not get to a common ground on that question. And I think that's where the entire debate ended because I don't think you can debate anything research-wise from that standpoint if you fundamentally disagree on that point. And that's what I was trying to make with that comment. That's the point I was trying to make. And that the attitudes of the participants were vastly different. And the demeanor of the participants were vastly different. And that that does show the intention of what those participants came to that debate to do. And that is the reply that I left, was that, look, it's about Dr. Niagara's attitude. That's what disappointed me about this interaction is because he, I could tell by his body language, by his, his, the way he's articulating his words, the way he was interrupting, the way he was being aggressive and petty and like nitpicking certain, like things that didn't matter as far as the terms of the conversation went. And
understand what the what he thought the audience wanted to see. He didn't come in there to serve the audience, his audience or anyone else who might be hearing from him for the first time. He didn't come to that debate to learn anything. He didn't come into that debate to respect his opponent as another competent professional in his own right. He came into that debate to showcase himself, to try to make himself look smart, to try to make himself look right. And on the one hand, I don't blame the guy, you know what I mean? Everybody wants to do that to some degree. He is a naturopath, right? He sees patients. I think at the at the core, he wants the best for his patients and he wants to do the right thing, just like most doctors do. But you know what? What a lot of doctors don't see is their blind spots. And that's what debates like this are supposed to show us, are our blind spots the things that we might not have considered. You might be extremely well-versed in the scientific literature and nutrition science, but have you even considered A, B, C, D, E, these other subjects that this other participant, namely Dr. Chapey, is bringing to the table? And, the, and, if, you were, and if you were considerate at all of the audience and the, the format of that debate to opposing viewpoints, and you wanted to serve your audience and you wanted people to respect you for being a professional and being someone who is in search of the truth, not just in search of being right, you would have come into that debate with a different attitude. And you would have come and you would have operated throughout that debate by the rules of the debate, which were set up in the beginning, which was each person gets to, you know, have their turn and then the other person gets to respond. It's not, it's, it's not a free-for-all where everybody just gets to interrupt everybody and we, and we lose all st structure by minute seven or whatever it was. We, we forgot what the question was by minute seven. So for those of us who clicked on that debate, hoping to hear good points from both sides, hoping to learn something that maybe we hadn't known about before, hoping to explore someone else's opinion who's also a professional who's also working with real people in the real world, who's also incorporating different modes of thinking and different evidence bases in their arguments. That's how you that's how you learn, guys. You listen to people who are intelligent and competent and have experience on both sides of an issue. And you go into it with as open a mind as you possibly can. All of us have biases, okay? All of us do. Like, just admit it, okay? We all have biases. We all want to be right to a certain degree because it's what feels comfortable. It's what makes us feel safe. If we are constantly challenging all the fundamental axioms that we have about how the world works and what's healthy and what should we do with our kids and all this stuff, we would be living in panic and anxiety all the time. And some people do live like that. We need a foundation, we need a structure to operate within to a certain degree. And so it's okay to come into something with preconceived notions. It's okay to come in with a bias, as long as you know that you have one and you can recognize it when it shows up. And then you can choose to challenge it if you want, and you can choose to hold on to it if you want. That is how we learn and grow. That is how you stay stable within a matrix of unlimited information and unlimited confusion and unlimited possibility that's how you stay stable within that, which is what reality is. There are hundreds of millions of different possible outcomes for everything. We are all an experiment. We are all an experiment. There's no way for us to know exactly what's gonna happen to us, no matter what diet we eat, no matter you know what choice we make, whether we go left or right. And so that can <laughs> cause like a lot of panic and anxiety and frustration for people. But you know what, and I think that's, and I think that's where these people that claim that science is the only answer, a lot of the comments that I was seeing in that video, well, if you, if you don't believe every single study that was laid out here, I can't even understand where you're coming from. Well, I understand where I'm coming from with that. And it's that pe just because scientists say something doesn't mean it's the end all be all. Doesn't mean that, they're, that science doesn't change. Doesn't mean that our ideas don't change. It doesn't mean things can be pr can't be proven wrong. Sci there's, never, there's never an end to what we know. There's always something new. There's always an exception to the rule, okay? So if you need a scientific paper to back up every single opinion and thought that you have or word that you utter in a conversation with somebody else and you cannot think for yourself, you can't think for yourself, you can't make judgments for yourself, you're completely disconnected from your intuition, 
And I say that with love because I have been that way. Okay, I've had insecurities about not going to college, about not becoming a scientist, about not becoming an academic scholar or a theologian or something like that. Okay, and I lived in fear of ever speaking up, of ever really just listening to my body and saying, okay, does this make common sense? Does this feel right or not? I don't care what a paper says. Is this helping me or not? And that's what my healing journey has taught me. Not to just disavow every paper, not to not trust anybody ever and not trust any science ever, but to recognize that science is just as corrupted as anything else, just as corrupted as politics, just as corrupted as our food system, just as corrupted as any other institution that you can name today. And for someone to come on and somehow make an exception for nutrition science, that somehow it's this bastion of truth and, and, and complete lack of bias and, and there's never any conflict of interest except for the studies that the other side brings up that they don't agree with. Those are all conflicted, right? But not theirs. You know? If you say that, if you're the person that's in that comment thread warring with other people trying to be like, well, the paper said this and so that's the God's truth, you cannot think for yourself. You're completely and utterly blocked from truth. And you see why it's pointless to live in the comment section? Because I could never say this in there and have it make any sense. It's impossible. And I would be wasting my time, time that would be better spent playing at the park with my kid, even though I'm shooting a video right now, but she's just like falling asleep in the swing, so. Time that would be better spent in my own creative endeavors. Time that would be better spent just relaxing and having fun instead of stressing about what somebody random, completely doesn't know who I am, doesn't know my life, doesn't care, said to me on the internet and why I have to be right. So those are my thoughts on the Dr. Nagra, Dr. Chafee debate. I, I, I applaud the effort to get to differing opinion people in the same video, in the same debate. I think that is definitely needed. But I think it's really, really difficult to do unless you know that you have two people that actually want to learn, that actually want to serve the audience, that actually want to put out something that is informative and helpful and not just sit there and argue to the point of making the audience nauseous. That all you just want to all you want to do is prove your point and you have no other concern. And so <clears throat> that's how I felt about that and that's how I feel in general about just spending too much time on the internet engaging in comment battles engaging in study wars engaging in debates with people that are faceless we don't even know if they're real they could just be bots we don't even know so okay just some things to think about <laughs> this week and sorry this is portrait but it's it's the way it is right now. Have a great week. I'll see you soon.